Hey, this is Chrono AB, and in the previous two videos, we made the enemy patrol a certain area and do a jump attack. Now, in this video, we will combine them together with our animation. So, the project is in the link in the description. You can download it and you can follow along. And after you do that, smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, hit subscribe for more content like this. Can we reach 1000 subscribers? Press the bell icon to never miss the latest videos. And with that said, let's get started. We need to implement these two functions, basically, these two functions with our animation. No, no, not the patrolling, by the way. These two functions, our jump attack and flip towards player. This will set up basically right here. And for that, we need a simple condition, all right? So we will only do the patrolling when we can see the player. So for that, we will create a box that will check for the player layer instead of the box layer, I mean ground layer. So that is what we will use. So for that, let's just go below our jump attack variables. And let me just copy this, paste it down here and call it for scene player. For scene player. So we need a reference to our basically something like box size. We need a reference to our line of sight. We will call that a line of sight. So serialize field vector to line of sight. Then we need to tell the computer which layer to check. Just like here, it checks the ground layer. We need a layer marks and we have to call it, or we can call it, player layer. So, serialize field, layer mask, player layer. Then, just like here, which like is grounded, and let's just make a boolean called can see player. Now we don't need a reference to our basically things like ground check because the whole enemy will be our object in which we'll create a box. So that's why we don't need things like ground check. So here I could just copy this. So let's just do that. Let's make a duplicate. And here instead of is grounded right can see player instead of our ground check position because we're not going to create this box in our ground check position. We are going to create this box in our transform dot position, meaning on the enemy. It won't be the box size. It will be our line of sight, line of sight. And it won't check for the ground layer. It will check for the player, P-L-A-Y-E-R layer, player layer. All right. Once we do that, let's just make a gizmo. So let's go down here. And this time we're not going to make a draw cube. The reason why is let me just make a duplicate. And instead of our ground check position, we're going to write transform position. And instead of box size, we're going to write line of sight. The reason why we're not going to make a draw cube is because once I save it, what's going to happen is it's not showing anything right now. But once I set it up, oh, this is the player. Sorry. Anyway, once I set it up, the line of sight, let me just get out of debug mode. All right. Once I set it up, what's going to happen is one. Yeah, it's going to totally cover up our enemy. It's going to totally cover up like here. We don't want it to cover up. We want it to be just like this, a wire. So instead of creating a cube, we are going to create a wire cube. So instead of draw cube, write draw wire cube, draw wire, not sphere, cube. C -U -B -E. Once we do that, everything is fine now. Now, if I go back here, as you can see, it creates a green colored box, but I want some other color. So let me just copy this, put it here, and then let me just organize it properly so that it will be easy for us to know. So for the color, not blue, I need red. All right, so now it will create a red colored box. Did I not save it? Nope, some mistake is here. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, once we save that, now it will work. Create a red colored box. Good. Let's set it up. So for our x-axis, it will be maybe, I don't know how big I want it to be. Let's say I want it to be this big. And for the y-axis, let's make it as big as our enemy. So that is all we need to do. For the layer, it's going to check for the player layer. Make that player layer and then make our player a player layer. Basically, just add a layer like this and once you press enter it will create a layer for now i have already made all of my layers so just make it a layer <laughs> player layer once we do this now what we need to do is now this will just check if we are seeing the player or not and here just write if we see the player meaning a, no 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 if we cannot see the player basically can't see the player and 
we are grounded, then we will patrol. So now what's going on here is if I cannot see the player and if I am grounded. So what's going to happen is whenever we perform a jump attack, because this basically this box is only this big, you cannot see the player when you are performing a jump. So what will happen is on midair it will start performing a patrol function if I don't write this. Where did it go? This basically. So if I cannot see the player and I am grounded, that means I am on ground and not jumping, then I will start doing the patrol. Once this is done, now these two I will set it up or we will set it up in our animation. So let's go here. In our animation, let me just drag it about here and first of all click on enemy or wherever you want this enemy animation to be most likely you want it to be wherever this script is all right so click on create animation and in our animation the first animation will be our uh, patrolling animation meaning enemy walk cycle basically so enemy underscore walk so here i am just going to drag and drop this for sprite basically so the first one and I'm going to put it in an interval of 10. For me, that works really perfectly. I want the animation to be a little bit slower and, and this, just doing this actually feels good. So when I hit play, see, it's a normal walk. You guys should make a really good animation. My animation skills are really bad. So yeah, that is it. So now I need another animation. So let's go here, click animation. And instead of animation, enemy walk, I'm going to write enemy idle. So underscore idle. And for the idle animation, done. So that is my idle animation. Now I need a jump animation. Basically, go here, set of enemy idle. Let's write enemy underscore jump. So for the jump animation, done. This is my jump animation. Basically, it's jumping. Once we do this, now we have to set it up in our animator. So here, let's go to our animator. Let me just bring it down here for now. So that it'll be easy for us to see the animator. Now we need two conditions in our parameter. We need two conditions. One is going to be called is grounded and the other is going to be called can see player. So let's make a Boolean called can see player and another Boolean called is grounded. These two are exactly like our can see player and is grounded from here. So it's grounded and can see player. It's exactly like these two. So now let's set it up. So here, whenever, let me just go here. Here you can just put in conditions so that only when these conditions are met, the animation will make a transition. So whenever I basically can see the player whenever i start seeing the player then i will do a idle animation and our idle animation once we have finished our idle animation what we're going to do is inside our idle animation we'll put two events here is how you put events by just clicking on add events we're going to put two events which will make our enemy first flip towards the player and then jump towards the player so first of all let's make that First of all, let me just go to the maybe 30 frame. All right, let's go 30 frames above. All right, 30 frames and I'm just gonna copy this. Control C and when I press Control V, it'll make the same sprite get copy here. Now, let's make our first event in 15 basically. Click on event and now the first event is while we are doing this animation, idle animation, first of all, we will flip towards the player. So flip towards the player. Here, what will happen is the functions that are in our enemy, wherever this is, the animator is, meaning every script that has the functions will be shown here. In this, every functions get shown. That's why we can see our jump attack, patrolling, even the fixed update function, the flip, on draw gizmo selected all of the functions are actually in here so that gets shown here so first of all now we will flip towards player and at the end let's add another event and here in this event we will do our jump attack now what's going to happen is when we see the player we'll play this animation while we're playing this animation we'll flip towards the player then we will do a jump attack that means when we do a jump attack our 
is grounded will be false. So, is grounded will be false. And when is grounded is false, we'll play the jump animation, right? So when we are on the air, we play the jump animation. So let's say you're on the air and you have landed. Now, once you have landed, you'll go back to being idle because our is grounded is now false. So when is grounded is true, we will jump. When is grounded is false, meaning we have now touched the ground, then we will do our idle animation. Now, let's say the player is outside of its uh, line of sight, right? This is our enemy's line of sight. Let's say the player is outside of our enemy's line of sight. We just did a jump attack, but now the player is outside. Now, what should happen is it should start playing the walk animation. So basically, like here, while doing our what do you call this? While doing our patrolling function, we when we do not see the player and when we are grounded, we do the patrolling function exactly like that. When let's make a transition. When we basically cannot see the player and let's make another one here. We are grounded. That means when we cannot see the player and we are grounded, we do this animation, the walk animation. Now, because we are making transitions, uh, transitions should not have exit time and in the settings, it should not have any duration as well. So keep it as 0.1. Do this for all of them. So I'm going to do this for all of them. This will make the animation really snappy and feel really good. That is all we need to do. Now we have to set up our animation so that this will be true and false according to our script. So first of all, let's have a reference to our animator. So here, write private animator enemy n. Then let's do the same thing as we have done here. So let me just make a duplicate of this. And instead of enemy RB, write enemy enemy is equal to get component and not rigid body, but animator. So once you do that down here, let's make a function that controls our animation. Then here, write enemy enemy dot set bool. And first of all, we need the name of the boolean, which will be our first one which is can see player. You have to write it exactly like this. So can see player. And now according to what we write here, that will happen there. Meaning if I write true, if I write true, then here when we start the game, it will be true. If I write false, it will be false. Now we want this to happen according to our line of sight. So if we actually see the player, meaning player is inside the line of sight, then this will be true and everything else will start happening. Otherwise, this will be false. And if you are grounded, we'll go back to doing our normal walking cycle. So this should be according to our can see play that is inside this script. So similarly, let me make a duplicate. And here, instead of can see player, right, is grounded, is grounded just like here is grounded and this is grounded if it will be true or not will be decided by our is grounded inside this script so is grounded once we do this let me just call it up in our fixed update just above our animator i mean patrolling function sorry and now once i hit save everything is done so we have everything done so let me just bring it here uh, let's just put it here and let me just make it a little bit big and now let's show you this thing so uh, okay let's make it a little bit smaller so that you can see that as well now what should happen is so normally it's just playing the walk animation see and is grounded is true so now here once can see player will be true as you can see it does the jump animation see Here, if is grounded is false, then we'll do the jump animation. But if is grounded is actually true, then we go back to idle. So it was just 
going back and forth on idle and jump animation. My bad. So, again, let me show you. So, it does your normal thing, right? It just does the walk animation. So, let me just go near now. It will stop. See? Does the idle, and once the idle is done, it jumps and plays the jump animation. So, now you can actually just set your idle animation to be how long you want according to how long you want the enemy to just stop and then do the jump attack. So if I want it to be about let's say one second, 60 frames per second, it's in 60 frames per second so 60 frames means one second so let me just put this here as well and let's put this at the center. So now it will wait for a second and then jump. So basically once it sees the player, it will wait for a second and then jump. Again, wait for a second and then jump. Wait for a second, flip, jump. Wait for a second, jump. So now that is it. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you did, smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Please hit subscribe. Can we reach 1000 subscribers? That would be awesome. So this script and everything is in the link in the description. There's an asset bundle which has mostly all the script that I have made in my previous videos. You can use that for making your game as quickly as possible. You can also support the channel on Patreon. That would be awesome. Now with that said, again, thank you for watching. I hope you liked the video. Smash the like button and bye bye.